container, O Father, of mercy and compassion. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, give us understanding of your word. Pour your spirit upon us, O Lord, draw us closer to you and give us wisdom on how to conduct our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I want to greet you all in a very special way wherever you are, all over the world. May the Lord truly bless you. It is a blessing that you have joined us today. My name is Kuzai Kogora. And today we want to focus on the wonderful topic. We want to talk about CBDC, currents, cashless and debt ridden society towards the mark of the beast. We've covered some of these things before, but today we're going to do a repeat and magnify. My brothers and sisters, the subject of money is very critical in the society. Jesus addressed the subject of money several times in, in some of his parables. Money is part of society, the society. In fact, uh, if on this program, let me, on this presentation, allow me to use the phrase, man is the fabric of the society, just for this uh, presentation. Money can either create or resolve problems. Today we have a serious money issues. It doesn't matter which side they are looking at. From the right, there is a problem. Left, there is a problem. East, there is a problem. West, there is a problem. Now the question is, what exactly is happening in the society? Society is in problem. But now the question is, is money a problem? Because Solomon says money answers everything. Let's go to Christ's object lesson, page 351, paragraph 1. Money has great value because it can do great good. Money has great value. The value of money is determined by, by what it's being used for. It has great value because it can do great good. So don't underestimate something that can do a great good, my brothers and sisters. And also don't try to demonize something which is good. Money is good and it can do great things. Hallelujah. Now listen, <laughs> the Bible actually never condemned money. The Bible has said money is the root, the love, the love, the love of money is the root of all evil. Now look at the statement. In the hands of God's children, it is food for the hungry, drink for the thirst, and clothing for the naked. It is a defense for the oppressed and a means of help to, to the sick. My brothers and sisters, I think of Nicodemus. The man who buried Jesus Christ with Joseph of Arimathea. The man was very rich. It was his money that sustained the early church. It was his money that he used to do great and mighty things for the church of God. And the church grew greatly because of elders like Nicodemus who understood the use of money. Now listen to the next part of the statement. It says, yellow last words, but money is of no more value than sand only as it is put to use in providing for the necessities of life, in blessing others and advancing the cause of Christ. So money is of no more value than sand. So money can just be like sand. Money in the hands of a fool is just like sand. Money that is used for a wrong cause is just like sand. Money that is not used for the spreading of the gospel of the salvation of humanity is just like sand. It has no value. That's exactly what the scripture, that, that's exactly what the statement is saying. So today we want to talk about cash. Let's talk about cash, the problems of cash and problems that are created uh, because of cash uh, scarcity in the society. And then we'll end by addressing the CBDC. Now, I read a few days ago, this was actually on the 18th of October, 2022, UK Cashless Society a step closer is more than 23 million uh, people abandon coins. So what exactly is happening here? People are moving away from the use of cash and they say 6% of payment within a decade will actually be done just by cards and other means not without with cash. The findings from the banking board UK Finance are likely to prompt concern that millions of people could be left behind as the shift of a cashless society accelerates. So we are going towards a cashless society. In a cashless society, we are not going to use much cash. We'll be using cards and other means. Uh, these days, uh, uh, when we are doing our major shopping, 80% of our major shopping, we do it online, actually just typing. You do it on Amazon, you do it on other uh, websites and so forth. That's how the society is at the moment. Now it says, however, other data is indicated that uh, cash is coming back 
uh, he's making a comeback as a result of the cost of living crisis. So why? Because in the cost of living crisis, people budget better holding their cash. People budget better holding their coins. So people would rather have cash in the hand. And you know, I like uh, this society where I'm in Zimbabwe. The best way to buy in Zimbabwe is to have cash. When you've got cash at the end, you go, you negotiate things, especially if you're buying on the market. There is no stipulated price. You negotiate while holding cash, even in big shops, even in big shops, like even in house states, you hold your cash. This is what I have. Yes, that's the price. But listen, let's negotiate. This is what I have. What can you do for me? Let me talk to the manager, please. And you can actually negotiate price down holding your cash, especially if you've got US dollars. Now, listen to this uh, very interesting ana analysis. Cash could be saved better if you are holding cash. However, if you have got other means like card, Sometimes, because you cannot see your balance, you tend to spend it quickly. You only realize that you don't have money when the card cannot go through. I've done that several times, my brothers and sisters, that you enter into a shop, you're trying to buy, and then they swipe it, things are not going through. What exactly is happening? And then you look at your phone, you realize that, oh... The balance is not balancing. But if you are holding cash, it's easy. You can do a good saving, number one. You can actually spend that which you have. You could trade better with real money. You have full control of what is happening. So basically, uh, what actually they are saying is uh, we are going towards, uh, uh, as, uh, right now, people are using cards very regularly. About 48% in 2021, they've actually been using cards. However, it says, however, the number of people turning their backs on cash surge in 2021. Why? This could be because some business went card only during the pandemic or stopped accepting cash for a time. There are also indication that some co consumers avoided using banknotes and coins for fear, uh, for fear they might transmit COVID. So if the people fear COVID, then they will avoid cash. But very soon, they believe that uh, by 2031, then only 6% of people in the United Kingdom will be using um, cash. The rest will be on other means. Rather than the UK becoming a cash-free society, over the next decade, the UK will, tra will transition to an economy where cash is less important than it, was, it once was, but remains valued and preferred by many, say the spokesman. So many people who continue to use cash while others will use cards, I will prefer cash. Of course, there are transactions which are so big and cash is difficult to handle. But if we can use cash, cash is the most ideal. I know people, you know, they, 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 they keep cash in their homes. They've got loads of cash and um, they actually believe that's the most ideal uh, to have cash. In fact, um, there are quite a lot of advantages and disadvantages of cash. I like the way how it's written in this paper. This, was, uh, this is from Wells. Should the UK become a cashless society? That was written on the 8th of September. Uh, on the red way it says, campaign have warned the move would put elderly and vulnerable people who struggle to maintain bank accounts online at risk. So we've got an option so far that uh, if you prefer to use uh, cash, use cash if you want to swipe. Uh, swipe. Swipe works better sometimes, but however, there are also advantages and disadvantages as we're going to learn now. It says, however, there are some advantages of going cashless. What are they? Take, for example, shopkeepers. By going cashless, they won't be targets of, for burglaries if they have no cash in their tills. Uh, proponents for the move also say it will reduce staff theft, uh, which cost uh, about 183 million uh, every year in the United Kingdom. So now, so look at the advantages. Uh, it's not a burden to count and also we prevent theft. However, as for the elderly, they will find it hard and those who are not uh, very computer lit, so they would rather prefer to use cash. Good, good reasoning. But my brother says there is a problem in the society. 
The problem is that the cash is not balancing. Things are not balancing. And the working class is in serious problem at the moment. Why? Because they are working and what they are working for is not enough. Uh, my son has been reading this book called uh, Rich Dead and Poor Dead. Very interesting book. I want to recommend this book especially to young people. I don't know where my son got it. I want to believe that he may have bought it some time ago, but he was reading it and he decided to give me a lecture. In fact, he just decided to give me an understanding of what he learned about the advantages of being rich and the disadvantages of being poor and also how people accumulate riches and how people become poor. It's actually very interesting. And I actually realized that some of the concept which my son was giving me, they're actually biblical concept, where you work and then you invest, where you work and then you invest, where you work and then you invest, and sooner or later you enjoy the profit of what you have worked for. It's actually a very good, uh, I will encourage young people, get hold of it, even old people like me, Get hold of it and read it. It just helps you because cash is a very important thing in the community. By the way, I'm not preaching about cash. I'm actually uh, cash. I'm preaching about the fulfillment of the prophecy and where we are at the moment. But I cannot afford to pass these lessons. It's actually important for us to understand the importance of this lesson. Now look at what happened. Debt concern as UK uh, public sector workers tend to buy now, pay later. So now because of the serious problem of finance, it says uh, experts have raised concern over cash trip public sector workers turning to controversial buy now, pay later loans after being turned down by mainstream lenders. And then it's an analyst by the University of Edinburgh found that, that in Scotland, one in 10 public sector and NHS staff who were initially rejected for a more conventional loan on the basis that they could not afford to repay it, went on to secure credit from buy now, pay later firms last year. Why are they doing this, my brothers and sisters? It is because, uh, number one, what they have is not enough. Uh, because uh, what they have is not enough they would rather, they want to act, acquire something very quickly. They go and get a loan, a loan to buy sofas, a loan to buy clothes, or a loan so that I can buy food. I'll eat today hoping that tomorrow I will have it. So it's a buy now, pay later. It's a very interesting scheme, is it? My brothers and sisters, anything called a debt, we should run away from it like leprosy because it's not the most ideal. The best you can do in life is to eat what you have. I've understood Psalms chapter 37. David say, I'm young, now I'm old, and my hair is now gray. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his children begging bread. The worst we can do, my brothers and sisters, is to go and borrow so that we can eat. If God has given us strength, if God has promised to bless us, if God has promised that he is will be with us, and if God has promised that our bread shall be sure, then surely there is no reason for me to go and borrow so that I can eat. My brothers and sisters, we are called to go and work hard. Where possible, God blessing. Let's trust God and work hard. Let's not go and buy now and pay later scheme to go and buy sofas to go and buy food on a buy now and pay later scheme. That's a very, very, very difficult thing to do because sooner or later we'll fail to manage those credits. But now we're in a very difficult society and I'm very sympathetic for I know what it is. Now listen, look at this. It says credit card spending jumps to 700 million in August as people borrow for essentials. What are the essentials? Bread water, food, these are essentials. It says uh, spending on credit cards leapt 700 in August as households borrowing heavily, heavily to cope with the cost of living. The increase at a time of heightened anxiety about, about uh, rising energy bills pushed the annual growth rate in spending to, uh, on credit cards to 12.9%, it's joined highest level since 2005. So it's actually going up. What exactly is happening? People are spending a lot. You can see that 5.9 billion has been spent, which actually showed there is a real stress in the household as people are struggling 
to make ends meet. Why are they doing this? Because they are trying to survive. I explained last week that uh, the middle class is being destroyed. And as they are destroying the middle class, number one, they've increased all the bills while the salaries remain the same. So now we are in the middle as a middle class. All what you are doing now is you are working, but what you are working is not enough. You are actually living in debt every day. So you are accumulating and accumulating. You are not accumulating cash. You are accumulating debt. Sooner or later, you declare yourself bankrupt. When you declare yourself bankrupt, you have nothing left on you. This is exactly that is happening. The situation has been created to ensure that we become poor and poor and poor. But uh, the question is, what exactly is the implication to this? Prophecy reminds us that the devil will use money to control. The devil will use assets to control. The devil will use cash to control. Everything in the world that is happening today, it's all calculated towards the mark of the beast. It's all calculated to ensure that we are prepared to receive the mark of the beast. They don't want to try it. They've already tried it. They already tried. They've already tried the principles of the mark of the beast on the COVID-19 vaccine. It's all done and they have proved that it's possible. So the mark of the beast is not going to be tried the moment when it's come. Remember, we are told by the spiritual prophet that the last day events will be very rapid. So this will just happen quickly, swiftly, and before we know it, everything will be done. Therefore, my brother and sister, the moment we fail to balance our books, we become slaves to economy. When we become slaves to economy, we are vulnerable to the schemes of the devil. And we are told that the king of the north will control the finances. Chapter 11, verse 42 of Daniel says, And he shall stretch for his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his doorstep. So he's going to control all this. My brothers and sisters, the one with money controls the narrative. The one with money dictates the pace. The one with money is the greatest. This is the belief of the, the belief of the society, my brothers and sisters. But however, those who maintain integrity, they will maintain their integrity. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter there is money or not, but they will maintain the principles of integrity. But the devil will use finance to control the world. People will do anything to receive cash because the Bible says the king of the north will have his hands on the treasures of Egypt. He will have his hands on gold. And if you want the gold of the king of the north, then you submit to him. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, he was, he was tempted on three things. Number one, appetite. And he did overcome on that one. In fact, he did overcome on all the temptations, presumptuous. But now there was one which was very in, in, in interesting. The last of the flesh, the last temptation. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 8, 4 verse 8, Again the devil taketh him up into the exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou fall down and worship me. Ah, this is very interesting, my brothers and sisters. I'll give you all this. What do you need in life or what do you want? I'll give you money. We give you everything. All what you need to do is just fall down and worship. I like the way how this was related in the book of Selected Messages, book 1, page 286. Follow this clearly. It says, the last temptation was the most alluring of the three. Satan knew that Christ's life must be one of sorrow, hardship, and conflict. My brothers and sisters, our life here on earth is of sorrow, 
of hardship and of conflict. And we cannot avoid it because the devil, the devil is at loss, loose. So we are in sorrow, we are in hardship and conflict. The question is, can I avoid this? I can make it easy by hard working. And the devil knows this very well. So the devil wants to simplify life for us. And when the devil simplifies life for us, then we are slaves of the devil. Now look, it says, and he thought he could take advantage of this fact to bribe Christ to yield his integrity. Satan brought all his strength to bear upon the last temptation for this last effort was to decide his destiny as to who should be victor. <laughs> My brother says, this is so powerful. The devil did not send an angel to tempt Christ. He had loads of angels, one third of the angels. And he said, the, the stakes are so high here. I have to go myself. The first temptation, he disguised himself. And in his disguise, he was defeated. The second temptation, he was defeated. But the last temptation, the devil did that all the devil could do. And he said, I'll give you everything. The Bible says he took Jesus Christ up high the mountain and he showed him everything. He said, this belongs to you. I'll give you all. You have come to take them. You have come to claim this. This was, I was given this by Adam. And he have come to take the title, this for me. But listen, you don't have to go through suffering. I can give this for you for free. Just kneel down, kneel down and I'll give it to you. <laughs> now listen, he says, he claimed the world as his dominion and he was the prince of the power of the air. He bore Jesus to the top of the exceeding high mountain and then in a panoramic view presented before him all the kingdoms of the world that had been so long under his dominion and offered them to him offered them to him in one great gift. What will you have done if you were the one? You are showed the big companies. Money stuffed in the bank accounts, big cars, big houses. This is all yours. All what you need is to bow. And today, there are many people that have bowed to this temptation. But the question is, my brothers and sisters, what is the cost? At what cost? Jesus was on a mission. Had he failed on this one, that would have been over. But Jesus remained faithful. But now look, follow this. Satan promised to yield his scepter and dominion and Christ shall be rightful ruler for one favor from him. All he requires in return for making over to him the kingdoms of the world that day, that day presented before him is that Christ shall do him homage as to a superior. If you can give homage to Christ, to the devil, then all is yours. It's a problem to get cash these days, guys. It's hard. But the devil say, if you just give homage to me, it's all yours. What will you choose? But at what cost? But I want you to focus. I want to go further to this because there's something interesting about this. It says, said he to Christ, this is the devil speaking, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whosoever I will, I will give it. That's Luke chapter 4, 6. He endeavored to make a special contract with Christ. So now, the devil endeavored to make a special contract with Christ. There is a possibility that we can enter into a contract with the devil. He will supply what we need at the cost of worshiping him. And because of the hardness and difficulties of the society, Many of us will sacrifice our integrity. And the devil has understood this long before. He enters a special contract with us. But my brothers and sisters, 
at what cost? It's the cost of salvation. And finance will be used to control the mass. The cash problems that we see in the world today, the inflation that we see in the world today, it's all geared to control the mass. And the thing that which the devil wants most, he demands worship. He will provide all those things for us. And as long as we worship him, money will be used as a controlling power in these last days. The Bible is very clear. I want to take you to something that we have covered before. We have covered uh, uh, the issues of CBDC currents, uh, the, the central bank digital currents. This is actually... Uh, something that we have covered and is something that is coming in many countries already. It's moving. We have noticed that uh, people, the countries have started rolling this. And uh, based on IMF, they are saying this CBDC are designed pro uh, prudently. They can, if designed prudently, they can potentially offer more resilience, more safety, greater availability and low cost than private forms of digital money. Not only that, and they are managed and regulated better. Over 100 countries are exploring CBDC at the moment to see what they can do. And even USA is actually uh, trying their best as well to ensure that by 2023, something could be working in uh, CBDC. But now, my brothers and sisters, this central big digital currency, it's all about control. The government will control the mass. But the real being behind the government is the dragon himself who wants worship. He attempted, he tempted Christ, but Christ resisted. And now, this thing coming called the CD, CBDC, it will be very difficult to resist because many of us will find it easy to use the CBDC. Not only that, there are many things that we will not be able to do without the CBDC. That's why it's very important, even now, my brother and sister, that we position ourselves in the right place where we don't depend on the system. Make no mistake, there are people who escape. But the question is, how do they escape? They will escape by going to the house of God. They will escape by going to the commandments of God by abiding by the truth of God. Now listen to this one. This was uh, on the 12th of April 2022. Central bank digital currencies are about control. They should be stopped. So this is a protest. Now this thing is about control. It says last week I participated in an online forum called USCBDC, a disaster in the making. Why is it a disaster in the making? It is all about control. They were talking about the policy of uh, this uh, uh, thing. It says, I believe that the Fed, that's the Federal Reserve, should not launch a CBDC. Why? Ever. And I think the Congress should amend the Federal Reserve Act just to be on the safe side. That position puts me at odds with the army of consultants who have been churning out papers and proclamations on CBDC, most of whom seem only to question when the Fed will launch a CBDC. So there are people who are waiting for the CBDC patiently, eagerly waiting that they can implement this. But others say, listen, this is all about control. Money will no longer be paper money. We are moving away from that already before even the introduction of the CBDC. And when we enter into the CBDC, we will be in full swing. No more cash. Very little cash in the society. People are just using cards or they are using their hands or they are using their eyes. And the transaction, very swift. And then it says, the CBDC itself is mainly the government's attempt to protect its privilege, position, and exert more control over money. The problem is that there is no limit to the level of control that the government could exert over people if money is purely electronic and provided directly by the government. A CBDC would give federal officials full control over the money going into and coming out of every person's account. Praise God for those who live in the countryside. They can do trade as families. They can use cash. 
They can use other means and the government will not be in control. But if you are in cities, my brothers and sisters, we're going to have a serious problem if our life solely totally depends on cash, on money. We need to come to a point where we actually distance ourselves from the establishment and operate an independent system. What do I mean about that, my brothers and sisters? I mean a system where you don't have to go to the shops and buy every time. You can produce by yourself and you self-sustain. You need to have a self-reliance. You know, a few days ago, we were talking about, uh, with a group of people, we were talking about self-reliance. What can I do to look after myself? What can I do to produce for myself? What can I do to manage things for myself, by myself? And we need to move towards that, my brothers and sisters, if we are going to avoid these big problems. Now, look at this one. Uh, this is Life site. This was on the 16th of September 2022. It says, Biden had many inches closer to a current system that could give government control of personal finances. So the government has a desire for the control of the personal finances, and the CBDC is the vehicle. It says, The Biden administration released on Friday a report announcing an inter interagency working group for the development of the central bank digital currency that could facilitate unprecedented government control over individual finances. And what will happen when they control? It says, the announcement which makes a significant step towards the US, US CBDC recently slammed by investment guru uh, Robert uh, Kiyosaki as communism in its purest form. So what exactly does that mean? It means when this comes, it is all about control. Now, Biden signed, uh, signed a document in, uh, in March. He said the March 9 executive order, he signed an executive order, declared that this administration places the highest agents on research and development efforts into the potential design and deployment options of a United States CBDC and called for an analysis of its potential implications. So this has been put on and accelerated. It's actually being accelerated. It's on the drive to be very quick so that we can actually have the CBDC. But now this man called Kayosaki, who is also the author of Rich Dead and Poor Dead, I think I've told you that my son was reading this book, Rich Dead and Poor Dead, and then he started narrating to me what actually is in there. And I will encourage uh, young people, please, even people like me, old people, Please get hold of this book, Rich Dead and Poor Dead. Just read what uh, he actually gives us skills to survive in difficult situations, how to manage our finance, how to invest. And it's not a sin to invest. You can invest in many different things, which actually helps you. You invest so that uh, you can enjoy a passive income. When you cannot buy or sell anymore, you have got something to fall on and even if you can buy and sell, you have an income that you don't need to go and work on self for someone. Somebody can actually work for you. Says the rich, the author of the rich, dead and poor, dead called the May 9 executive order, the most treasonous act in the U.S. history, and is joined by uh, Jim Rica, Rickards, an economist, investor, and former central intelligence agent official who has dubbed CBDC Bitcoin's evil cousin. So in other words, he's actually saying CBDC is related to Bitcoin, but this one is the evil cousin because of the level of tyranny it, ex it would enable. So because of the control that this thing will bring is the cousin of Bitcoin. In fact, it's the evil cousin of Bitcoin. And they said, according to Rickard, a U.S. CBDC would replace the U.S. dollar as a digital dollar, which he calls Biden bucks because he wants, he wants Biden to take full credit for what I consider to be the crime. So in other words, he's actually said this is actually crime. This is a crime because this thing should not supposed to be. And then he said uh, regarding the, uh, the CBDC, when Biden bucks are rolled out, many experts, myself included, believe they will begin an era of total government control and surveillance. This is not hyperbole. 
this would dramatically expand the power and influence of the federal government essentially acting as a new type of spyware. With Biden bucks, he continued, which is the CBDC, the government will be able to force you to comply with its agenda because if you don't, they would turn off your money. This would be like freezing a bank account. It would be so much easier. This won't be like a freezing a bank account. It will be so much easier because it's digital. It can be done instantly. Now the question is, where is this policy coming from? Who will be in charge of the finance in these last days? The king of the north. And who is the king of the north? The papacy. And what exactly is he going to use? I strongly believe CBDC will be used in connection with the National Sunday Law that there may not be any buying or selling. Now it says, uh, while White House announcements do not indicate when the CBDC would be developed and implemented, financial advisor Joe Brown is warning that the infrastructure for a US CBDC is already being quickly developed. On August 29, the Federal Reserve announced that its digital installment payment service, Fed now, would begin full-scale pilot testing in mid-2023. Fed now would allow 24-7 settlements that happens instantly from bank to bank. My brothers and sisters, I strongly believe that the launch of this will be followed by the mark of the beast. All these things will happen simultaneously because as they control, the moment when they've done a pilot and it has been accepted, then the mark of the beast will be coming as well. Now, Brown says, he continues to say, believes that fundamental CBDC technology is being rolled out slowly and independently of a full CBDC so that it doesn't look like a power grab. Otherwise, everyone will reject it. Everyone in their right minds would look at this thing and say, absolutely not, not at Brown, adding that the gradual implementation is also needed to test its com component parts in baby steps and make sure the CBDC doesn't fail flat on its face. Yes, they will do it slowly until we've accepted it. They will do it slowly until we are used to it and then they will bring it swiftly. That's exactly how they will bring the Sunday law. They've tested it and they are testing it every day, and they are putting the structures in place. My brothers and sisters, soon or later, if we are not careful, will be caught unprepared because the Sunday law movement makes its way in darkness. And this is the vehicle that is to be used, the CBDC, to control our finances, to control our liberty, to control our decision making to control whatever we are doing because the moment you get hold of someone's man you are holding their nerve now he says uh, but make no mistake a central bank digital currency is coming and it looks like this new fed now service is just a launch of the infrastructure of launching the full version of the cbdc later on brown won't so make no mistake my brothers and sisters this thing is coming whether we like it or not. Because the verse says in chapter 13, 16 of Revelation, and it causes all both small and, uh, small and great, rich and poor, free and bound to, re born to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy nor sell, save he that is a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So make no mistake, this thing is coming. And when it comes, we are going to be forced we will be compelled. An environment will be created where it's impossible not to submit. The question is, how are we going to survive? My brothers and sisters, remember this statement from Review and Herald uh, Extra, December 11, 1888. The Sunday movement is making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue. And many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whether the current is trending. They are working in blindness. While we think it's all about money, while we think it's all about climate change, it's all about national Sunday law. It makes its way in darkness. And as children of God, we should be watching the time. 
watching the fulfillment of prophecy, watching the movement. As we are watching, we are watching, we are working, we are seeking, we are saving, awaiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We prepare our hearts by preparing others. We watch by preparing others. And at this juncture, my brothers and sisters, it's time to make our calling and election sure. Whatever we do, let's do it quickly. Let's position ourselves that if this crisis will catch up with us, we will be caught in the right place and our challenges will be much less than what it will be if we'll be like Lot in Sodom. So we need to make a choice. Should I be like Lot in Sodom or I will be like Abraham? May the Lord bless us, shall we pray. Thank you, Father, for the time that you have given us. There are issues of cash in the society. But Father, you are on the throne, ruling and guiding in righteousness. Blessed are those who trust in you. Our faith, our hope is in you. May we see your power and rejoice. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the Lord truly bless you. Let me hear your thoughts. And to those, uh, uh, you can also join us. We've got a presentation on Sunday at uh, 90905 on Classic 263 Radio. Wherever you are in the world, if you are not in Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, you can just go on the internet. You can just type Classic 263 Radio Live at uh, 05, 0, uh, 0905 AM Zimbabwe time. Please uh, catch up with us and we'll be presenting about the little horn we are going to be talking about not the in fact we are going to be talking about the mark of the beast so please join us and i will encourage you please to share the message wherever you are please share the message with colleagues and friends and i look forward to see you in the next edition and if you have not subscribed to the herald report youtube channel please do so until then may the lord continue to bless you in jesus name